chapter 27, Interference and the Wave Nature of Light. So for the chapter 27, we're going to actually need a little bit of concepts from chapter 17. So we're going to do a flashback 10 chapters, uh, which is some new material, but it's just trying to take some of the concepts of it. So let's take a look. In chapter 17, section one, it looks at the principle of linear superposition. And that says, hey, if you have two waves coming towards each other, you can find the resultant, the overall wave, by just adding together whatever they are at any given instant. So we could imagine here's a slinky, and if you have two, one person on each side and they both send a little wave pulse towards the other, those waves start approaching each other, right? They're moving in, moving in. And then at the very middle, when they meet, they add together and they get twice as big for a brief instant. But they don't stop there. They each keep traveling on their merry way. So the wave just passes right through. The other case you could imagine is if someone on the left sends an up wave, an up wiggle on the slinky, and someone on the right sends a down wiggle on the slinky. Well, then when they meet in the middle, they cancel each other out just for that instant when they're overlapped. But they haven't stopped there. Once again, they just continue on their merry way. It's not that the other one has affected it, but just that we have to superimpose to get the net result. And you may have seen this at the ocean uh, with waves, right? If you have two waves that are coming towards each other and they both like whoosh, go together, then it can suddenly become huge and a much bigger wave. And so this leads to something in chapter 17 where we focused, the, cha the book is focused on sound waves. 17.2 looks at constructive and destructive interference of sound waves, where you can again imagine an ocean wave where there's something up and something down, or you could imagine the slinky, if you like that. And sound waves follow that same sinusoidal shape that looks like a wave. When it turns out, if you're at one point where you're, you're getting equal sources from both sides, that they both have waves going up and down at the exact same rate, well, then you're going to get something twice as big. This is like when you have swells that are perfectly in sync to create an extra big ocean wave. But on the flip side, if you move, say, one of the speakers slightly further away, you can get it so that your waves are offset just slightly so that one of the sound waves is going up while the other one is going down. And this can produce total cancellation or destructive interference instead of something that's twice as loud. And there's a neat way to represent this louder and quieter of constructive versus destructive interference, where the waves are either working together to become bigger or working against each other to become smaller. And to do that, I'm gonna use this online tone generator. And I have it set to two different frequencies, 440 hertz and 438 hertz. And what we'll hear is there will be instants where it's constructive interference and it's louder. And then there will be other instances where it's destructive interference and it's quieter. So this is slightly different than what's depicted here, where in this figure they're the exact same frequency and they're just shifted offset from each other. This instead, because they're slightly different wavelengths, there will be times when they overlap to produce constructive and other times where it's destructive. So let's give it a listen. You may want to turn your volume down to make sure it's not too loud here. So first, the 440 hertz, it's a sine wave. So there we have the sine wave, very steady, exactly one frequency there. And now I'm going to add in another sine wave at 438 hertz, so two hertz off. Ready? Three, two, one. Hopefully you can hear where it's getting louder and quieter, louder and quieter. That's constructive versus destructive interference. Super cool, but I also will stop so we don't get a headache from that. <laughs> 
So that gives us some sense of the idea of constructive destructive interference with sound. Now for chapter 27, we're going to focus on how that applies to light. So 27.1, the principle of linear superposition, that sounds familiar, that's the same title as 17.1, because it's the same idea. We're just now focused on light waves as opposed to sound waves. So when two or more light waves pass through a given point, their electric fields combine according to the principle of superposition, which just says that uh, whatever the waves are at any given instant of source one, source two, they add together to form something either bigger, smaller, or somewhere in between. And one of the key things here is that if the sources start out in phase and arrive in phase, there will be constructive interference. It will become twice as loud. And the condition for this, for them to start in phase, to start totally in sync, and to stay in sync, is that the difference in the path length, L2 minus L1, needs to be equal to an integer number of wavelengths. What does that mean? Well, if they go the same distance, right, uh, if it's just to one point, then you can imagine they both go up and down together, so they arrive at the same point at the same time. That would be m equals zero here, path length difference is zero, and it's constructive interference. But there are other points, like the one shown here, where source one has traveled through two and a quarter wavelengths, source two has further to go. But if we're at just the right point, it could travel three and a quarter wavelength and it will arrive looking just the same as source one. What's the difference between these? Three and a quarter wavelengths minus two and a quarter wavelengths. Once you subtract that, you just get one wavelength difference. That's m equals one here. And that is a condition for constructive interference. That's at that point P, it will be brighter, or in terms of sound, it would have been louder. Similarly, for destructive interference, we want the waves to start out in phase, but arrive out of phase, to arrive exactly out of sync, right? So one's going up while the other's going down, and we get this perfect cancellation there. And that's shown here in the figure where source one goes down, up, down, up, while source two is going up, down, up, down. So they're doing exactly the opposite of each other. And the superposition of those two waves will be a net result of nothing. So the condition for this is very similar to our constructive interference, but instead of being m times a wavelength, it's m plus one half of a wavelength that the difference in path length needs to be offset by half of a wavelength. And that's exactly how much you need to shift one relative to the other. So that's why it will now be destructive interference. So we can check with m equals zero. That would be a path length difference of one half of a wavelength. So source two would have to go half a wavelength further than source one. You could also do it with m equals one. And then that's three halves of a wavelength, so one and a half wavelengths further, and so on and so forth. And we see that illustrated here in the figure, where uh, source two has a path length of a three and a quarter wavelength, where source one is only two and three fourths of a wavelength. So the difference between these two path lengths, three and a fourth minus two and three fourths, is exactly one half of a wavelength. So at this point, it is destructive interference, and that would be a dark spot. Now, in order for this to work, in order for that spot to always be destructive interference or always be constructive interference, the sources must be coherent. What does it mean for sources to be coherent? Well, in news, it means that it actually makes sense. It's not just an angry rant. And it's somewhat similar here. Our physics definition is that sources are coherent if the waves they emit um, maintain a constant phase relation. So that means it's constantly emitting a wave like this, and it doesn't suddenly jump ahead and skip ahead. It's just very steady, very coherent, able to follow it. So that gives you an introduction 
to our principle of linear superposition, how we can look at the effect of two waves and see how there is constructive and destructive interference depending on the path length difference between them.